I welcome everyone to First United Church this, uh, what turns out to be a quite beautiful November Sunday on November 8th, a little bit windy, but we'll take the temperature. That certainly is quite nice. As we gather together this morning, we come to our time for welcome and announcements. And so I just want to put it out there. Are there any words of welcome or announcements that we wish to share with one another? And if there are, please, Unmute yourself and then make your announcement and then remute yourself. Good morning. I have an announcement. I know we're going to be uh, zooming our worship for a while, and I thought because we think about it every Sunday about going back to in-person worship. I want to share stats with you of where we are week to week. So during the announcements, it'll be very short and I'm just going to show you what we have for new cases in Morrison County. So this chart shows, oh wait, I gotta get, I know. can see that you can see just by not reading the figures that it's going up. So our number of new cases or we new cases last week went up to 108 number of cases and that isn't cumulative. That is how many new cases last week, the week before there was only 121 or two new cases, but the week before that was 160 cases. So we, um, we know where we want to be before we can return to worship. And we need to be down to the point where per 10,000 people, only five, are, five new cases are reported. Here we show the red line is where we want to be to have in-person worship compared to where, the, where we are uh, in actuality. So prepare for the long haul on Zoom worship. This is how we all stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah, for sharing that information. Are there any other words of welcome or announcements to be shared with us this morning? Remember, if you have one, uh, unmute yourself to make your announcement. Well, hearing none, then what we are going to watch here in just one moment is a video presentation that our general minister and president of the UCT sent out for all of our churches. So please take this moment as we all watch and listen to Reverend John Dorhout of the UCC. Good morning, everybody. I'm John Dorhauer, General Minister and President of the United Church of Christ, and I speak on behalf of leaders in the wider church, wanting to say just a few words. When you gather to worship this week, we ask that we all acknowledge that we are a church and a nation in need of God's providential mercy. A political battle has been waged and waged within a continuing global pandemic and a domestic pandemic of race hate whose wounds are both ancient and fresh. And as we worship this week, there will be those among us who are trying hard to celebrate a political outcome and those who are trying hard to heal from the same political outcome. 
And it's hard to celebrate any outcome when the margins are so thin and come at the end of years of widening distrust between political rivals. And it is as hard to heal when the tactics we engaged in to win these elections were so, in a word, unkind. We have opened and are experiencing wounds here that will take time, trust, and empathy to heal. Now, we claim Jesus as our God. We are disciples of the risen Jesus. And he is for us the embodiment and incarnation of God's eternal and undying love. And we know that there is nothing in this world that can separate us from the love that we have in God and know in Jesus. As leaders in the wider church, as covenant partners with all who worship as the United Church of Christ, we're asking only one thing today, that we all pause and ask ourselves what love would require of us next. We have arisen as a community of faith, the United Church of Christ, within a democracy that empowers every citizen with a voice and a vote. But our voices of late have been hard to hear. They are choruses of shouting at each other, which have replaced what has often been that deep listening to each other that engenders lasting relationship and trust. Narratives of mistrust and division have replaced our more endearing narrative of the common good, of shared interest, and of mutual ministry. So we call upon the members of our shared household to center again on the healing power of God's redeeming love. Our mission can certainly be enhanced by political outcomes but our mission is never resolved by them. And our mission is to love all, to welcome all, and to seek justice for all. The world will come to know we are Christians by our love. And so let our singular commitment from this moment on be to a love that surpasses all understanding heals all wounds, and restores all hope. Thank you. And so let us continue in our worship and join now together as we reflect and center ourselves and prepare for worship with this moment of reflection.
Just hearing that lovely moment of reflection reminds me to share that today we have Kathy on the piano, of course, Diana singing and Amanda making it all work behind the scenes. Thank you to all of them for their uh, gifts and talents and treasures. Let us now join together as we continue our worship in our call to worship. Printed in your bulletin, our words will be on the screen. God calls out for us and we must choose. Here we are, God, help us to listen. God has given us all we could ever need, and we must choose. Praise be to you, God, provider of all good gifts. God longs for us to be ready, and we must choose. We do not know the hour or the moment, but we are awake with blessed Savior. God is with us. What is left for us to choose? As for us in our house, we will serve the Lord. And let us continue doing so by joining in our prayer of invocation together. Be with us, dear, dear Savior, as we incline our ears and open our hearts in worship. As we hear of our ancestors, as we listen to parables, as we come alongside of your word and sing of your praises. Blessed God, fill our minds with your message and teach us anew of your ways. Remind us of the covenants we have made and of the promise of our future. Instill in us through your Holy Spirit the abilities and talents to be your hands and feet to our world. Ease our discomforts and dash our fears so that nothing can stand in the way of our hopefulness. And let us not forget the gracious works of your almighty hand or the righteousness of your commandments that we could indeed rise up from this hour and go forth as your people. Amen. Our opening hymn today is The Risen Christ. It's from Worship and Song, number 3179. Words will be in your hymnal packet or on the screen. This is The Risen Christ. responsible and dangerous of us. 
So let us instead share prayers of peace. Let us instead share prayers of moments of peace with one another and across this world for those who need our prayers of peace. And so in this moment, we actually share stronger, we share deeper, and we share truer these moments of peace. Let us now gain and gather together in our shared peace. Let all God's people say, Amen. Let us now join in our prayer of confession. For the last several weeks uh, before we join in this, we've been singing Love Lifted Me as a prayer of grace, as a hymn of grace after our prayer of confession. And I thought it would be good for us to take that hymn that is indeed this offering of grace and to use it to bring water and depth to our souls, that it could fill us in our time with this confessionary hymn as we speak those words. So let us indeed pray our prayer of confession together. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the seas heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. My soul in danger, so I looked above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift me by his love out of the angry waves. He is the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. Jesus, our Savior, wants us to be saved always. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted even me. That's right. When nothing else and no one else could help, love lifted me. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. Hear yourself say those words about God's love lifting, about how Jesus saved your soul. Now trust and believe that you are indeed saved through the love eternal, God everlasting. Amen. We now come to our scripture reading. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 1 through 3, and verses 14 through 25. Hear these words from the book of Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago, your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father, Abraham, from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites 
in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, indeed, we are witnesses. Joshua said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Our second reading today comes from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Hear these words of Paul to the church in Thessaloniki. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means see those who have died. For the Lord himself with a cry, a command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. These are the words of God for the people of God. Amen. It's now time for our children's message. So children, I would have you unmute yourself and say hello to everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Anybody else want to say hello out there? <laughs> well, good. Well, welcome children. Can you see the picture that's on the screen? So I'm gonna have Amanda pull up a picture on the screen and can you tell people what you see? Train. A train yard. A train yard, yeah. Uh, what else do you see? The sky. Um, okay, okay, the sky, yeah. But lots of train tracks, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you see trains and lots of train tracks. And did you know at one time I was a train conductor? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> you know what that means? Uh, you were going around on the trains and asking people for their tickets and making sure everything was all good on the trains. Yeah, and I'm the person who would have to get out and throw all those switches and make sure the train went on the right track. Can you believe that? Imagine if I had to do that in that picture that you see. How many tracks are there? A lot. So the reason I, the reason I bring this all up is we're talking today about choosing the Lord and we're going to talk in the main message about choosing the Lord. And so what you see in front of you is what? If you were coming down a single track and you saw all these other tracks in front of you, what would you have to do? Choose a path. Yeah, you'd have to choose a path, right? Yep. Well, how do you know which one to take? Uh, um, beckoning you. What's that? The one that's beckoning you. 
The one that's beckoning you. Wow, that's deep. Yes, very good. The one that you're supposed to take. The one that you're supposed to take. Okay. Because it's right the track that's going to lead to your destination. The track that will lead to your destination. These are all wonderful answers. Um, answers that I did not even anticipate. This is wonderful. So how do we know where we're being beckoned or what we're supposed to do or what our destination is? Um, that's the more difficult question, isn't it? Uh -huh. Honestly, you're going to be going through life and it's going to be a question that will be with you a lot of your life. Sometimes you may not know how you ended up on the track that you got on. Sometimes you may be right in line and you're on the main line and you're on the express train and you're going right through. But all of the time, if we do what, will we know that we are on the right track? Well, listen to God. Yeah. Listen to God. Follow where God is leading us. Maybe even check ourselves and say, is this the path that God would want me to be on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what happens if we accidentally throw the, law, the wrong switch and we go on to the wrong track? It may lead us to hell. What's that? It may lead us to hell? My different destination. A different destination? Does it mean that God left us and did not follow us and is not with us? No. No. For God is with us no matter what track we are on, right? Yes. And I would wager and I would tell you that God would even help you throw the switch to get back on the right track. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wow, children, you did wonderfully today. Uh, I wish we could have done this outside where we could actually throw switches and stuff, but then again, that might be dangerous and the Burlington Northern might not appreciate that either. So <laughs> thank you for your wonderful answers. Let us pray. Blessed God, thank you so much for these wonderful insights that our children bring today. There are so many tracks in front of us and in front of them and in choices in our lives, God. We long in the depths of our heart, though, to choose you, to choose where you would lead us, to choose the path that you would lead us to. Thank you, God, if we do throw a wrong switch or go down a path that perhaps isn't the best. You do not abandon us, but you see us through. You lead us to help. You beckon us back to the fast track, the main track, the right track through. And wherever we go, God, you are with us, guiding us, conducting us, leading us, and being with us in every moment of every journey. We thank you, God, for choice, for free will, for opportunities. And we thank you, God, for your everlasting love. Amen. Thank you, children. You did wonderful. Thank you. We now come to our second hymn for today, Keep Awake, Be Always Ready. It's from the New Century Hymnal, number 112. Words again will be on your screen or in your hymnal packet. This is Keep Awake, Be Always Ready.
reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. Hear now these words of Jesus. But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, till the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Will you please pray with me? God, indeed, as we gather here today in this hour, awaken us to your word, open our hearts and our ears to your message, and help us, God, to know how true and grace-filled your love is for us. In all these things we pray unto you. Amen. Our sermon today is about choosing the Lord. And I wanted to begin with a story that I've shared with some people, but not all people. So if I've shared it with you already, please bear with me. But when I was in seminary, as part of my seminary education, you have to go through what's called uh, chaplaincy uh, uh, experimentation or internship. So you do what's called CPE or uh, uh, pastoral care experience where you were actually interning as a chaplain somewhere. And I was a chaplain intern at the Veterans Hospital in St. Cloud, and there was an individual there who loved to go up to all the people there and, and corner them and ask them, when was your day of conversion? When were you born again? What was the moment, the exact moment when you knew that you were a disciple of Christ and it happened to you? And I would avoid this person because I really didn't want to be uh, harassed, I guess is the appropriate word. She would always corner people. Well, this person ended up cornering me one day. There was no way out. And sure enough, they asked me, what was your moment? What was your time? And I told them, I said, I can tell you the exact hour. I can tell you when it happened. I can tell you the moment when I you know, was baptized or the moment when I was confirmed or the moment when I took Christ as my savior or all of these things. But the truth is that I am constantly converted. That in every moment of every day, I am constantly dedicating my life to Christ. Choosing the Lord. Many people know of the line of scripture we read today from Joshua that says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But not so many read beyond that where Joshua actually challenges the people when they answer similarly that yes, they will choose the Lord. Because he, he challenges them to truly understand what it means when they are covenanting with God. Joshua even goes so far as to tell them that they will not be able to serve God. He knows them, he's walked with them, he's been with them since they've been out of Egypt. For they love their household gods, they love their foreign gods, their gods of their ancestors way too much, that they won't be able to serve this one true God. But the people press on and they relent and they answer that they will indeed be witnesses against themselves in trials of life, that they are willing to serve the one God and Lord. At that moment then, they choose the Lord and they make a covenant right there at Shechem. So what about us here nowadays? Are we choosing the Lord? Or do we serve other gods that we put in front of our God? 
For instance, gods of convenience say that when we worship when we choose to, or praise when we choose to, or listen to God when we choose to. Gods of consumerism that say as long as I get what I want, be able to buy what I want, or can earn what I want, I don't care about anybody else. Gods of power and prestige that as long as I am in power, then who cares that anyone else may be suffering? Gods of selfishness, perhaps. As long as I can go out in public, as long as I can go and be with other people, as long as I can do what I want, who cares what is good for anyone else? Who cares if we have community spread of COVID-19? Who cares what's going on in the world as long as I can do what I want to do? What about gods of politics and party? We certainly have heard plenty of that lately. False lines of delineating us along these false alliances when what truly matters is our unification in our humanity and in our godliness. Even gods of sports gets in our way where we're willing to put the health of others on the line just so we can watch or enjoy sports or we're willing to sacrifice our holy times, times with our family, times with our church, times with one another, just to watch a game. And lastly, one that's really hitting us now, gods of divisiveness. Gods that would tell us there is no way to heal, there's no reason to heal. Gods that would rather have us remain divided as individuals instead of a community. Gods that would try and tell us that our differences are too great, that we cannot come together and be one. Those are the gods that we put in front of our God. So what does it mean then instead to choose the Lord? Well, we get this passage from 1 Thessalonians that talks about dying and being awoken. And we get our gospel message that talks about being awoken. And what's so interesting about this is that in ancient times, a way they would talk about death is calling it being asleep. So if you are woken up, you are not just awake to your present reality, but you are awoken to a different reality, an eternal reality, a realm beyond this realm, a reason beyond all reason, a love beyond all understanding. So choosing the Lord means that we actually have to choose to be awake. We have to be awake instead of asleep. We have to be alive with one another instead of dead. That's why we get this line from our message today. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. So how do we keep awake? Well, first off, we have to choose the Lord. We have to choose love every time. We have to choose peace every time. We have to choose hope every time. And we have to choose healing every time. We have to choose to wonder in awe at the creations our God has put before us and our God has put within us, not quiver in fear of what may come. We choose to think about our actions and how they affect one another, not only thinking about ourselves. And we choose to believe that our Lord rose from the dead, and so will we, awoken for all time, not so that we would ever fall into slumber and die, but that we could indeed go on and be an eternal realm with Christ our Lord. We choose the Lord by covenanting with God and with one another in a contract of love. And just like I talked about at the beginning with the story from my chaplaincy program during seminary, this is a choice that is in front of us every day and sometimes multiple times a day that we must choose the Lord, that we must choose to be patient and hopeful and loving towards one another. Not uninformed or dead or asleep, but awake, in the know, alive and willing to engage. And so we are not skirting 
around the edge or perhaps not being clear about what we mean. Let us be purposeful and clear. When we go out in public and we choose not to wear a mask and put other people in danger of contracting COVID-19 and spreading a deadly and dangerous disease, we are not choosing the Lord. When we see people who do not look like us, believe like us, or vote like us even, and all we can think of is hate and ill thoughts, we are not choosing the Lord. When we seek to remain divided in our silos and not work together to form a better society, to live in the covenant that we have promised to God and one another, we are not choosing the Lord. When we continually pursue actions which endanger others for our own self-interests, we are not choosing the Lord. And when we refuse to be the church, regardless of whether we are inside a building or not, when we threaten to leave our church just because it does not meet in person, we are not choosing the Lord. Choosing the Lord means being united in a covenant that awakens us to the love God has for all God's children. Choosing the Lord means self-sacrifice. Choosing the Lord means being woken to our world and ourselves. Choosing the Lord is a practice of staying awake, staying informed, staying within the choice to serve and love one another. And today, with so much of what this last week has been for us, it is vitally important that we choose the Lord who longs for us to be united as one in the love that heals all wounds, bridges all divides, and dreams all dreams for God's children, all of God's children. And again, just so we are vitally clear, we are all God's children. Choosing the Lord. And so this day, November 8, 2020, as we, the tribe of First United Church of Little Falls and all of those from other tribes gathered around this world, come here and gather today as the people who have been summoned as elders, leaders, judges, and the people of our time and place. Do we promise to revere God and put away our petty gods, these false idols that we serve as part of the gods of our destruction, the gods of our sins? For on this day, we must choose whom we serve. And I will just tell you, as for me and my husband, we choose the Lord. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Blessed Savior, hear us as we long to choose you. Deep within our hearts, there is this love that you have placed there as a God spark within us. Help it to grow, help it to burst forth from us through our hands and feet, through the words of our mouth, through the actions and purposes that we go about our day. As we covenanted with you all those thousands of years ago at Shechem, let us once again covenant with you this day that we will choose you, God. We will choose you first and foremost above all else that we will choose to worship a God of love who cares for all your children, a God of healing that longs for us to be united in the oneness that is you, God, a God of hope that dreams wonderful dreams for us, that fills us with individual talents and treasures so that we can come together as a tapestry of love in this world. The God who gave us Jesus Christ to forgive our sins and to save us for time immemorial. The God who became Jesus Christ, who became God incarnate, who became God with us so that we would know what true grace and true love is. 
that we covenant with the Holy Spirit, that we would be filled with the thoughts and actions of love, that we would take that breath in, that we would breathe in your spirit, God, before we ever breathe out any words. That we would slow down and listen and be people of presence, people of purpose, and people of love in our world that needs it now more than ever. And for those prayers, God, within ourselves, which just seem rock hard, for those people or places in our worlds which seem willing to just break at moment's notice, and for all of the things in between, God, we take everything to you, our fears, our anxieties, our hopes, and our joys. Everything we lay at your feet, God, for we choose you. And indeed, God, we come here today with prayers on our hearts. And so I want to open it up to the community. Are there prayers of our community that we wish to share with one another now? If so, please unmute yourself so you can share. I ask for prayers for um, my mother-in-law, Margaret Flolid. She had to move into memory care at Highland on Friday, and um, she did not go willingly. So if mm. everybody could say a prayer for her, for some comfort and peace, that would be great. Prayers for Margaret Flolid, who has had to move into memory care and is resisting a little, but it is a necessary move. Prayers for our daughter, Daisha, who has um, decided to put herself into inpatient treatment for alcoholism. And uh, we expect she'll be spending the whole next year down in Rochester, Minnesota in self-care. Also prayers for my friend Peggy, whose mom passed away in the cities and due to COVID restrictions, they weren't able to be with her and hold her hand and spend those last living moments. And it's been really hard on Peggy. Prayers for Daisha as she enters self-care and treatment in Rochester and prayers for Deborah's friend Peggy, whose mom passed away and due to COVID restrictions had to do so without the care of her family. Prayers for grandson, Justin, who's just been diagnosed with the COVID and his family that they don't get it. Prayers for grandson, was it Justin? Yes. Who was just diagnosed with COVID. Prayers for my daughter-in-law who just had foot surgery and hope that it is successful and that she recuperates well. Prayers for Mary Jean's daughter-in-law who just had foot surgery. Prayers that she will recover and heal. Yeah. Prayers for all the people impacted by the natural disasters all over the country. Indeed, prayers for all of those impacted by the natural disasters in our country and around them. Other prayers of our community. Prayers for our brothers and sisters in Haiti as they prepare to host a clinic in both Yvonne and in Sobier um, soon. Prayers for our brothers and sisters in Haiti as they plan on opening some clinics up in Haiti. And I won't dare to try and announce the names that you pronounce in French or Haitian Creole so well, but prayers for our brothers and sisters in Haiti. I'd like to offer prayers for the Ballou family who is experiencing difficulty at this time. Prayers for the Malou family who are experiencing difficulties this time. And prayers for all of our church family who are on journeys of the unknown with health issues. Indeed, prayers for all of our members, uh, friends and those in our church community who are on unknown journeys 
who need our prayers and the strength and purpose and love of God. Any other prayers of our community during this time? Then let us join all of these. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Prayers for our country that we can move forward and heal. And prayers for these United States of America that we could indeed come together and be healed. Let us join all of these prayers together with the prayers in our hearts, which may be too deep for words to reach as we now pray silently together. And let us join all of our prayers together as we sing our Lord's Prayer song. Again, it's in your hymnal packet or words will be on your screen. time in our program, which is what I like to refer to as holy offering. It is a holy offering because it's holy for us to take what we can and donate what we can to support the church we love. Now, whether that was monetary and you used to write it out in a check form and put it in an envelope or put your cash in there, please still do that. Your church definitely needs your financial stewardship. But that's also the prayers that we send out the prayers for healing, the prayers for hope, the prayers for love that is our holy offering unto this world. And it is also how we think about and dedicate ourselves to the church. What are the actions that we long to be? Who and how and why and what does it look like when we indeed choose the Lord? That is also a holy offering. So let us indeed partake in this time together for this is our holy offering. Thank you. 
And now let us join in our doxology together. Christ, we pray. Amen. Our final hymn today is Now is the Time Approaching. It's from the New Century Hymnal, number 609. Again, words will be on your screen or in your hymnal packet. Now is the Time Approaching. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. 